Hello, welcome back. Let's continue to review the Understanding Construction Drawings textbook. This video is about Unit 39, uh, and that is the Structural Drawings. So we have two more units left, and um, this is uh, one of the final ones, so they won't be too long. So please stay tuned. All right, so um, in this unit, we'll see the footings for columns and walls, and um, also uh, we will be able to interpret the information found on the foundation plan that includes dimensions of foundation walls, reinforcement of foundations, and the locations of the various elements. Also, we'll take a look at the columns, beams, and lintels. And we will see the structural details and sections. And again, I I'm always saying that please refer to the textbook. This is important. Uh, videos are not enough. It is important for you to actually see the drawings. So let's start with the foundations for commercial buildings. And the foundation supports the loads or weight imposed on the superstructure and spreads those loads over a large enough area so that the earth can support it uniformly. In most commercial construction, the foundation system is composed of spread footings and stem walls and pads that act as footings under columns. These are the same elements that are found in most um, one and two family homes. And the biggest difference in the foundation for a commercial building is that for a small house, um, the thickness of the concrete and the amount of reinforcing steel. So um, also the structural drawings consist, consist of a plan that shows the layout of the foundation and the major dimensions and details drawings that describe reinforcement, expansion joints, and variations in design at special locations. So the placement of column footings is indicated by referencing the structural grid coordinates. And uh, we, we discussed the structural grid in the previous unit, that's 38. So please refer to that if you would like to see it more in detail. Um, uh, and let's talk a little bit about structural steel framing. So uh, the structural steel framing consists of columns or vertical members and beams or horizontal members. Uh, the largest beams called girders attach to the columns and joists are intermediate beams that are supported at their ends by the girders. Lintels are the beams that support the weight above the opening, such as door or window or non-structural panel. So if the uh, first floor is a concrete slab, it is described on the foundation plan and details. And the second and higher floors um, are described on framing plans and um, the roof frame as well. So many buildings have several floors that are framed alike. In that case, a note might indicate that the framing plan is typical for each floor. So uh, framing plans for structural steel uh, are uh, drawn on the structural grid coordinate system. And you can see that here in the drawings, uh, the lines indicating beam, beams stop short of the symbol for the girder or column when the beam is framed into the supporting member and does not continue to uh, uh, continue over it. The abbreviation DO, which stands for DITO, indicates that the specification for the first member in a series to be repeated for all members. A number in parentheses at the end of the designation is used to indicate the elevation of the top of the member. This may be the elevation of the distance above or below the floor line. And again, please see the drawings here. Joists are frequently open web steel joists. Uh, sometimes they're called bar joists. Uh, bar joists are manufactured in H, J, and 
K, series dependent on the grade of steel used and their strength requirements. K series are stronger than H series and H series are stronger than uh, J uh, series. Uh, and uh, you can see that in the drawings as well. Um, a bar joist designation includes a number to indicate depth, a letter to indicate strength series, and a number to indicate cord size. For example, the designation 16H6 indicates a 16 inch deep H series joist with number six cords. So uh, again, it's best to see the drawings than to actually hear about them. Uh, so please come back to the textbook. And um, the actual length of members are not shown on the general uh, contract drawings. This information is shown on shop drawings that are drawn by the steel fabricator sometime after the construction drawings are completed. Uh, and um, to find the span of the member, uh, you can look at the frame and plan. Connections are usually shown on details in sections. So uh, lintels, they are sometimes categorized as loose steel. In masonry construction, a steel lintel is placed above each opening to support the weight of the masonry above the opening. And uh, these lintels are not attached to the steel building frame which is why they are called loose steel. And uh, if there are several lentils alike, they are normally shown on the plants by a symbol and uh, then described uh, more in a lentil schedule as well. So please refer uh, to the textbook. You can see lentil schedule and other details here. So when we talk about masonry reinforcement, uh, we know that um, masonry materials have great compressive strength. Uh, that is they, that they will resist crushing quite well, but they do not have good tensile strength. The mortar in masonry joints is especially poor at resisting the forces that tend to pull it apart, such as a force against the side of a wall or tendency for the wall to topple. So masonry joint reinforcement is done by embedding specially made welded wire reinforcement in the joints. And greater strength can be achieved by building the masonry wall with reinforcement bars in the cores of the masonry units, then filling them, um, filling the cores with concrete. So concrete used for uh, this purpose is called grout. And reinforcing steel is also embedded in masonry walls to tie structural elements together. For example, it's quite common for rebars to protrude out of the foundation and into the exterior masonry walls. The strength of a masonry wall can be increased considerably by the use of bond beams. And the bond beam is made by placing the course of U-shaped masonry units at the top of the wall and reinforcing steel is placed in the channel formed by the U-shape. Then the channel is filled with grout. So this result, um, the result is the reinforced beam at the top of the wall. So that was it for our unit 39. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in unit 14.